now about the bushfire brigades. There wasn't any really a bushfire brigade in Wanneroo. Um, I've looked at some of the old correspondence and uh, Scadden was the road board secretary then and he was the only fire control officer in the district. He had to be because that was the law. The bush, he had to come under the Bushfire Act and they had to have an appointed bushfire control officer. He was it and nothing and no, nothing else. They had no nothing for years and years and years because that's the way the community wanted it. They wanted to burn indiscriminately when and where and whenever. It didn't hurt the district at all. And uh, if there was fires at all uh, getting threatening a property, they'd all get together and put it out one way or another. And they had no problems. Then came the dwelling up fire and things got a bit what can I say? A bit risky. People suddenly saw what could happen in a decent fire and everybody got a bit edgy. And the council, just before the Royal Commission report came out, the council spent £940 on equipment, which was an enormous sum of money. Must have, old, old Wynne Rees was the secretary at the time, and he must have shed a tear when he had to spend that much money on fire control, I can tell you. Anyway, they bought pumps and tanks and sleepers and and knapsack sprays, which were all finished up in every market garden in Monterey. Um, and, the, and previous to that, they had had a list of fire equipment available, and that had come, that, they canned up all the knapsack sprays in all the market gardens in Monterey, and that became part of their fire fighting equipment. <coughs> Excuse me, so it reciprocated itself. Um, don't know what ever happened to that. They had four tanks, four pumps, 200 gallon tanks, and for Rex pumps, motors, etc., etc., etc. Don't know. It all disappeared ultimately. Old Ted might have had one of them on his tractor, uh, on his trailer, I should say. Anyway, um, from there we got all this gear, and they decided to form brigades. And uh, oh, the responses we got were pretty, uh, well, from what I, I've read. And I did find a packet of, or a manila folder of, of applications to join the brigade dating from in the 19, early 1960s, and that's when they had a drive. And some of the responses uh, that were written up in minutes, etc., as blokes saying, "Well, I work in town. Um, if you need me, I'll I'll be available after work." Or um, some of the other responses were, um, we've never had a fire brigade and if there's a fire I'll go out to help but I'm not going to be belong to a bloody brigade, blah, 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 so it went on. Where's that paperwork now? I've got it, I think. I've got the, uh, I've got the applications, uh, I haven't got the minutes, I'll need Chris has got those minutes. Um, but, uh, and that was that. So they formed four brigades: Central, South, uh, Central, East, Central, West, uh, South. Oh no! And the North Brigade and another brigade uh, at um, Sorrento, Marmy and Sorrento. I think they call that the South West Brigade or the Sorrento Brigade. I'm not too sure. Anyway, old George Geneff was the leading light in that one, and uh, and they carried on, but highly unorganised and, and they had a heap of fire control officers and uh, they managed to get out most of the fires. I don't think there was any great loss. Uh, there never has been as far as I can remember. I think we've lost one or two houses in the in the whole 30 odd years that I've been associated with um, the brigade and that was in urban areas in later years. Uh, some of the big fires we've had. Cyclone Elby was a good fire, that was about a three day fire. Uh, it didn't start off with Cyclone Elby. We had some pretty bloody hot weather then and it started on Wanneroo Road and it headed up near um, near Flynn Drive 
and it went through the no no sorry you're all right it went through um, through the national park and headed was heading south with uh, a northeasterly wind behind it and then it headed and it was coming down the side of near above national park and uh, we'd previously burnt out a section of Hall's land between the or adjacent to the National Park and we thought we'd stop the damn thing but we couldn't and it got through and then it did a, a, a 90 degree turn with the wind change and headed up the coast up towards Quinn's Rocks and there was panic stations then because uh, so we had to burn out uh, south of Quinn's Rocks along Old Quinn's Road to uh, hold the bloody thing, stop it getting into Quinns, and then lo and behold, uh, Cyclone Alby come on, did it rip? Oh. It came through, it jumped Burns Beach Road. Burns Beach Road was that, the fire was that hot that all the shrubs on the side of the road left a, like a, sh a burnt shadow in the road. You can imagine a shadow. Uh, on the road, well the bitumen had melted, or well, the blue metal had gone down in the bitumen to the shape of the of the shadow, and that was evident for a couple of years after. You could drive along the road and look and see where the bushes had been on the side of the road because of the of the outline that was burned in the road. It was that damn hot. Anyway, we didn't know what we were going to do with the the Burns Beach people. I think we evacuated them. I can't remember. But anyway, we, we were in trouble. And I saw it as it came through near above National Park. The ash banked up against the green uh, banshee trees, growing banshee trees. And it was like a bloody forge, a blacksmith's forge, and it just burnt straight through the trees. The ash was that hot and kept banking up. It was just burnt straight through the trees. They just were dropping off. And now I realise how the Ash Wednesday fires in, in the eastern states, how that uh, uh, how that burnt fence post and everything. Once the ash banks up against it, it just burns straight through with the wind. It's the wind that causes the trouble. Anyway, it finished up. It it jumped Burns Beach Road and headed down towards Mullaloo. It excuse me. It, Gadecki had a, on the corner of or what is now Tudelup Drive, used to be called, um, God, I've forgotten the name of the road there, Quinlan Ave, Quinlan Ave used to be called. He had a, uh, a trotting complex there and he had a lot of native bush around the place, but he had a sprinkler system run off the power to water all this down in case of fire. He had a Good trotting complex and a nice house. Anyway, of course, the pair with that site in Alby, there wasn't any power. Power had been shut off, and we were in trouble there too. We thought we were going to lose him. But he was the only thing of any real value except the pine plantation, the seed nursery, um, that where um, Edith Cowan is near, the university. That was a uh, seed plantation for the forestry and there was a scouts camp there of course they were the only couple of things there and uh, we managed to get it out before it got to Mullaloo I think Cyclone Alby had, had gone through and the wind had dropped or, and we had enough trouble and I know the rest of the state was in bad bad trouble but it took us another day or two to, to clean, the, clean the fire up and black it out on all the edges but it burnt a lot of, it burnt, virtually burnt all the country from Quinns Rocks Road to Mullaloo Road, uh, from Wanneroo Road to the coast. And But when it got over the, that side of the lake, it was it was on restricted to the west side of, of Lake Joondala. She was a beauty, that one. Uh, another one, I had a fire. That's before all the suburbs of uh, Connolly and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is going right back. Our Cyclone Alby Day. Uh, 